Good evening, New York City. Welcome to Doc NYC. We can clap, we can always clap, always, always. I'm Rafaela Nehausen, I'm the executive director of Doc NYC. We're so excited you can be with us this evening. We're in the fifth year of our festival and I'm proud to say, we can clap for that too, yes, fifth year, yay. We're the largest documentary festival in America, I'm proud to say, and we have more than 150 films and events, so we really hope you can join us over the next six days to experience some of them. Before we get started, a couple of important thank yous. Thank you to our leadership sponsor, HBO Documentary Films, major sponsors, History Films, Annie Indie Films, and Sundance Now Doc Club, leading media sponsors, New York Magazine and WNET, and a huge thank you to all the volunteers and staff that really make the festival run. Tremendous thank you, like this lady right here, let's thank her, she runs the theater. Thank you, Katie. So let's just say in five years, I've had the fun time of introducing lots of different films, and I'm not supposed to pick favorites. I'm definitely not supposed to pick favorites. However, I will say that I'm probably the most excited to introduce this film tonight out of possibly anything else I'm doing in the festival. So you're all in for a tremendous treat. Uh, we are here to watch I Am Big Bird, and to say a few words, I would like to welcome the filmmakers, Dave LaMattina and Chad Walker. Please help me join in welcoming them. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Don't start without me. Oh, wow. Gee, there sure are a lot of people here. Yes. They're all here to watch a movie about you, Big Bird. What? About me, a movie? Yeah, it's a, it's a documentary. Really? A documentary, huh, how sophisticated. Do you have any favorite movies, Big Bird? Oh, sure, I love the movies. Uh, let's see, uh, like The Birds, <laughs> The Birdcage, uh, Yellow Submarine. I just love Paul McCartney. <laughs> well, we hope you can add this one to that, Big Bird. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you to our Kickstarter backers who uh, have joined us tonight. Hey, thanks, Kickstarters. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoy the movie, and we'll be here to talk to you afterwards. Thanks. Yeah, we're yeah, here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> hope you like the movie. La, 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 la. Please help me welcome our filmmakers, Dave LaMattina and Chad Walker, as well as Carol and Deborah Spinney. Have a rotten day. <laughs> I just wanted to start out by asking the filmmakers. I mean, it's such an incredible story. I'm so happy you made this film. What brought you to this film? And can you just talk a little bit about how this started? Absolutely. Um, some years ago, I actually interned at Sesame Street uh, as an intern in home video. And I was telling uh, my friend Des, who's here somewhere tonight, about it. And she's like, oh, I'm actually related to Carol Spinney. And I was like, that's cool. Who's she? And she's like... <laughs> She tells us the whole story about who Carol is. I had no idea, um, and so I told Chad, and at that point we thought this is a really cool film uh, idea and we should do this. And this was in 2009, actually. So it was a, a, a five-year journey. Actually, about almost five years ago to the day, we were showing another film in the theater next door um, and shot on Sesame Street like a week later for the first thing for this. So it's been just about five years to this, wow. to this stage. Woo! <laughs> Thanks for the idea, Desi. Thank you, Desi. Hi, Bob. Hi, Carol. It's Bob McGrath for you. Oh, yay. Carol, Carol, what was the experience like for you to let these gentlemen follow you around and shoot you and dig through your archives? Well, what you was know, that like? Well, uh, first, uh, Ellen Lewis, who is the PR lady for Sesame Street, she called and said there's some fellows who'd like to make a, a uh, documentary about uh, our life. And uh, I didn't think I was <laughs> worthy of that, but uh, I, I, they said, well, you'd like to come in and talk to them. And so we went in. We were very impressed with, uh, I know that uh, well, Clay isn't here, but uh, it was nice meeting these, these three young men. And uh, we were favorably impressed. And I thought, gee, it might be kind of a good idea because at that time I was, going, I was in my late 70s. I've reached, uh, I'm now an octogenarian. <laughs> I thought it was an octopus. <laughs> and uh, uh, then uh, they kind of took over, but uh, Deb helped them out a little bit too. 
<laughs> yeah, when we went in for that first meeting, Deb said, uh, I'm not a professional or anything, but I've pretty much videotaped everything we've ever done. <laughs> I'm like, wow, all right. And at that meeting, Carol, you pulled out Oscar, which was totally surreal. And I think we were talking about gluten allergies. And all of a sudden, Oscar was just like, boring. <laughs> it's crazy. I live with a gluten allergy. <laughs> it's actually wheat. I can't eat wheat. I miss, I miss uh, 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 was it shredded wheat? Quit. I love it. And even Wonder Bread. <laughs> and Wonder Bread. Well, it's nice, it's nice, soft old bread. <laughs> Well, I, I went to a, uh, the Puppeteers of America uh, annual festival and that, that year it was at Salt Lake City. I thought that that was a good thing to do. And uh, actually the previous year I'd been to, I forget, where was that? I think it's in St. Louis. And I saw some wonderful puppetry, some done in Europe. And uh, I was inspired. I, I, I wanted to think of doing something stronger than just the silly stuff we were doing. Not that uh, it wasn't fun to work on the Bozo Show. It was Great fun. I, I made it, we made it up as we went along. <laughs> and uh, it was just all live. I loved live television. And if we, I, I even got knocked out cold on the air. And Bozo says, I think Flip Flop's going to take a little nap. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get up. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I, I wanted to do something better. So at the uh, Puppeteers of America, if you, anybody is there wants to get go anywhere with puppetry, I think that's a good idea. They should look it up on the internet and join the Puppeteers of America. It does wonderful things. And I wouldn't have had this job because that's where Jim always backed it up. And he was there scouting for someone to play Big Bird and Oscar. I, when he hired me, I had no idea what I was going to be doing or what the characters were like. And, uh, uh, but I think that it was, uh, uh, it was sort of like a, a made in heaven <laughs> because I, I think I'm good at what I'm doing, and I was I right so. for them. I think so. And uh, I, it's just so, I love Big Bird, as a, and uh, that thing about the feathers being ripped off, that's how I really knew I felt about him. Uh, we were in a, it was being stored in a room that wasn't completed, the floor was dirt, because they hadn't cast the cement yet, it was a brand new uh, arena. And uh, I, I couldn't believe that anybody would just do, do something like that. Uh, had they never seen him? They wonder because it basically looked like he was dead. He was on the floor in the dirt, and uh, I really that helped me understand who who he was and what I could bring to life. And uh, when I'm in him, uh, it's a lot of work, and it, it's uh, awkward and difficult, and more so in my older age than it used to be. But uh, I help uh, that young man, Matt. Vogel, he's a bird. <laughs> I've done uh, a Big Bird in, in uh, Germany three different times, and uh, I did it all in German because I was stationed in Germany. And uh, I learned to speak some German, so ich kann ein bisschen Deutsch sprechen. Yes, another question. I keep talking too much. <laughs> I'm doing it again. <laughs> Well, I have a question for you, Deb, if I may. You're an incredible support. Obviously, it comes on screen that this man couldn't be who he is without you. That's evident and clear. But I was wondering, do you ever want to, do you ever try the puppets? Do you ever pick them up? Do you ever? I, she does. I, yeah, I, well, when you go to Ireland, I do some of the, the old show, The Big Bad Dragon, with you. And I did do some real Muppets. Actually, I've done Oscar the Grouch on the Emmy Awards when they wanted Big Bird and Oscar. So, on the same time, so there was a song so I could lip sync that. I was as nervous as anything. And uh, at one time, I'm standing next to Jim and he's doing a 30th anniversary Muppet extravaganza. And he says, we need more puppeteers. Here, put this on and use. And I'm standing next to Jim doing the Muppet and I almost fainted, but I made it through. So I do a little bit, but mostly I like to be behind the camera. The writer and Jim uh, wanted to have a Big Bird in a... Uh, a dance routine with uh, Leslie Uggams. And uh, unfortunately, I, I have, to, to say I have two left feet isn't even how bad it is. Uh, I, I really have never been able to learn steps. Uh, I, I, I can't figure out, I can't walk and talk at the same time, <laughs> or dance. And, but anyway, I, uh, I said, I, I was very upset because I, I just couldn't get the routine that the choreographer had, and he's used even dance 
description things. I didn't know what he was talking about. And uh, so he, uh, I said, Jim, I was very, I'm getting really upset because I didn't want to screw up on uh, Jim Henson's Muppet Show. And uh, I almost was in tears. And I said, why do you always put, give me a, a, put me in a dance thing when you hire a big bird and one of your specials and things? And he says, because you're the only Muppet with feet. <laughs> <laughs> So, but uh, uh, Richard Hunt, who alas we lost to, uh, he was the one doing the funny dance. He was he was the funniest guy alive, and um, he he said the best advice is to pretend Big Bird thinks he's a good dancer, and, uh, and the whole thing is a pretend. And since I've done that, I've danced with the Rockettes and uh, on this, and uh, I had my own private Rockette. She was, boy, what legs. Uh -huh. True. True. And uh, so, but uh, I've really managed to get through with the help of people. But her, she's the center of my whole universe. And uh, well, I think some children's television, pro uh, a lot of television, is certainly in inappropriate. If you have young children and you'd like them not to lose their childhood too soon, because uh, there's an awful lot of very adult stuff. Uh -uh. And uh, so, I, a lot of people. Uh, Kind of, if they have young ones, television is not available to for them just to flip on and watch anything, or just be, because uh, some of the stuff, I I love uh, there's a, some really fun funny uh, sitcoms, but they're all very adult, and it's not appropriate to lose the children's uh, childhood too soon. They'll do that anyway, but uh, don't don't push it. But uh, so I think uh, there are some other good children's television shows, but. Uh, I really think that Sesame Street still reigns uh, great. And do I worry? Well, let me tell you what I think. I actually do worry. I have a four. Oh. You a good puppet theater yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Do we worry about apps for four-year-olds and what's going on? I don't think. I think I'll let you answer that. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Never thank a grouch. Uh, well, uh, that was an elaborate question. I'm not quite sure of the answer. You, you can answer. Yeah. It, well, see, uh, we when we started, we, we were introduced the show to the public that Sesame Street is an experiment in television, mm -hmm. and it still is. So when th we uh, it has changed constantly uh, to meet the needs of the viewers and uh, their attention to the show, and but it's also uh, uh, what they constantly every year they have new goals. This year it's a lot of a. a teaching uh, skills that will be useful to them in life, and uh, many things like that. Uh, sometimes you do see Big Bird and Oscar in the same scene, and when that happens, uh, we use, uh, usually it'll be Matt Vogel, or uh, Peter Lentz, or a few other great puppeteers we have, and uh, they'll move Oscar if he has the lesser, uh, if, I, if, if Big Bird has most of the lines in that scene, I'll, do, I'll stay in the bird and do it. Or if it's the other way around, Matt will be in the bird and I will be in Oscar. And I do both voices, but not sometimes at the same time, but usually we pre-record the one that I'm not doing. And uh, they rehearse a little bit to get the, they're very good with the lip sync. That was a struggle for me in my early days of Sesame Street, learning to do the lip sync so it worked. But I was watching the singing on, at, at the, uh, uh, not easy being, easy being green and I, I think I did. I'll give myself an A on that one. <laughs> and I have a final question for Oscar, if I may. Oh, yeah. What, what is it? So, Oscar, I don't know. Did you get to see the movie? And if so, what did you think, Oscar? No, I was in that dang bag the whole time. <laughs> I don't Let think I've seen it yet. Am yeah. I in it? A little bit, yeah. You yeah. do great. You do really well, Oscar. Uh, well, tell me I did it rotten, I'll be happier. You were rotten, yeah. rotten. Uh, but good. Oscar, maybe we can ask the filmmakers where other people can see this movie, so maybe you can see it next time. What do you think? Uh, that's a great question. Um, we just signed a distribution deal with Tribeca Films, and we're going to be taking the film out. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We'll be taking the film out um, in early 2015, so go to our website, IamBigBird.com. Our Twitter is IamBigBirdMovie, um, and you can get all the information there. And if you liked it, tweet about it, please.
Thank you, everybody, so much for coming. Please thank these incredible people up here and Oscar. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, thank you so much.